Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I have a Dollar Tree DIY video for you. I am taking a bunch of the fall and Halloween wooden cutouts and I am creating, I think it's six, maybe seven, different designs and combinations to decorate my house for fall, Halloween, and even a couple Santas. All right, so I hope you enjoy this video. It's a long one today. Feel free to, you know, fast forward and look at all the different ones. Santas are at the end. But thanks for watching and have a great one. Let's build a garland. I've decided for Halloween through Christmas, I'm making a black garland. This will work for both my decor. So I bought a bag of these different shaped beads and at Michael's. They just came in a big in a big bag and I loved the different shape instead of just the round. So literally what I did, me and my spray paint, I laid out a bunch in the box lid and I spray painted them black. So I wanted the same color, but different shapes to give me some texture and just some different. Then I took, I'm gonna use this dark brown uh, baker's twine that I got at the Dollar Tree and I've left it on its spool. And then on this end, I just took a big needle and literally I laid out a pattern and all I'm gonna do is, and some of these holes are a little bigger than the others, I'm just be feeding the beads in the pattern that I've chosen. And it'll go from the beginning till the end. Now, how do I know how long I want it? I have a garland I made last year of just, these are just different, oops, different sized round beads that I order on Amazon. But this measurement is my mantle. So I'm keeping this out to measure against because I know that this is how long my mantle is. If you, if you don't have something of that nature, then you can just measure your garland. Take your string down. Give yourself some extra, though. I like mine to have a drape to it. Um, so what I'll do, I know I have a ways to go, but I'm just stringing my beads. Now, if you wanted to make a permanent garland, you could string, oh, here's a good thing to show you. I missed some of the spray paint on here. So I just take a marker pen in black and touch up my spray painting job that wasn't great. Oh, and you can totally take markers and color your beads, but I'll, I'll let that dry. But also Dollar Tree sells, and I need to get them out of my stash and show you with the next step, but they sell um, wood touch-up pens, like markers, like these paint markers, and they 100% will stain your wood. So here's my garland. I just love it. I used a high gloss black spray paint to give it some, you know, visual flair. I want it to shine when it's on my um, mantle. So I'm going to continue making my garland because I need to have it completed. Then I'm going to count my beads so I can divide by five or six, depending on how many of my wooden finished wooden chips I want to make to hang from this garland. And then I'll show you all the different ways I'm creating with my chips, you know, with these wooden ornaments, painting everything. And then we will come back and I will show you the finished garland and then we'll start working on the different items to hang from it. All right, I hope you can see it. There is just the garland, which I do like that it kind of blends, but not really. I'm getting ready to get some of my Halloween stuff out, but I wanted to show you the garland. So here's what it looks like just by itself. Set it out here is we're going to start showing you how I'm taking these different wooden shapes, painting them and making different types of hanging 
pieces for what I'm going to use them for is my garland for multiple seasons, but you can use them for anything you like. If you're not going to hang it, you can fill your hole with some wood filler. I use lightweight spackle. Some people use a different spackle. You can just leave it or put a piece of glitter on top or something to cover it up. Um, if you think you're not going to want the hole showing. And I'll show you some pieces I did where I filled the hole and where I didn't fill the hole. Because if I'm going to use it in my tear tray, then I wouldn't want to have that hole. But that's me. All right, let me... Put some stuff away and pull out some other stuff and get going here. All right, all of our little friends are done and they've been sealed and dry. So we have coffee, tea, sugar, and spice because I like to put spices in my coffee. And I'm back with this same butcher's twine on a needle. And we're going to make a smaller garland. Oops, I just dropped it. So here's my thought. I want them to hang straight, right? So I don't want them, if I hang them just on here, they're gonna wanna turn sideways. So what my plan is, let's see if it'll work, is to take one of these oops, small natural beads. These were just left over from another project. I'm gonna go in the bead. So I came, and I'll show you again, but I came up behind the hole it through the bead and I'm gonna go back down here, right? And then untangle everybody because my string is not straight. Here we go. And then I can hang it like that and there's a bead. And if I wanted to, I could um, paint the bead like a black color but I think I like the natural look. So we'll do it again. We're gonna come up through the, the hole with the needle. You don't have to have a needle, it just, I find it easier. Back through the hole in the needle, down through here, back through the hole. And what this is doing is it's, um, I'm just gonna untangle it here. It's just keeping it so see how it will lay flat on my little wall. And I, I'll space them as I go, but I probably will need more twine at this end. So yeah, this is so easy guys. And I have a little space on my wall where I wanna hang these under my kitchen cabinet. So I don't need a long um garland i just needed something small i was going to attach it to the canisters but it's not going to work when they came in the mail it was determined that that's just not going to work now i do want to space these evenly and then i will show you what they will look like when i hang them up in my kitchen i have to do my coffee bar so there I think let me maybe get that a little further this direction so I think they're even evenly spaced and they're gonna hang on the wall like that so maybe I need to spread them a little further here I mean I could get the ruler out if I really wanted to be crazy but let's just not do that so there, that's what they'll look like spaced out. And that project is complete. I just take the needle off of this end and I'll leave the strings long like I did before um, until I tie things up. And then I'm just gonna put the needle here because we may need it again for another project. But that's it for the coffee cups. Let's see what else. All right, here's my new coffee station for fall, probably through Christmas. <laughs> I put my my buckets out, but this is what you came to see. Those are the signs that I made, and I just hung them back there, and I think they look adorable. And I'm liking my little coffee setup. I think it's good for fall. 
right, we are gonna work on the Halloween ones first. Um, as far as what's gonna go on my garland. Now, if you can see, I've painted all the base pieces that I want. So I painted two cats black, and I do paint them front and back because the way they'll be hanging, they kind of turn. And then I've painted, oops, I'm getting like all kinds of other paint all over everything. It's just mess, it's nothing, it's not this. So let's move this. This was just what I painted on. These are the um, artist canvas papers that I got. So we're using, I have these from last year. I don't know if I saw them this year or not, but those are from last year. And then these are just the witches or the witches hats that I painted. Again, I spray paint mine, but you can do whatever you like. And then when you, how cute is this? And I want to do them opposite of each other. So we're just going to glue those on. But before that, um, I like to take my white gel pen. And I like to highlight a little bit of these. Just give a, you know, where the creases I hope you're seeing what I'm doing here just where the crease in the hat is you'll see them on a couple of the other ones that I've done nothing of any major importance and then I'll take and just do a little white a little white band around the hat I just like to give it that little bit of detail you can write words on here if you want. And these are just jelly roll white pens. I'll let that side dry. And then I'll do this other hat. Right? Because that's just kind of what you got to do in these little where there's creases. And like I said, I'll do both sides. But the reason I pre-painted was so everything would have time to dry. So I could do this because you definitely want your paint completely dry when you go after your hat. So that was just quick and easy. You can do the same to him. I think with the cat, I may just do a little highlight of his tail, you know, where his fur is sticking up. Just gives him a little highlight there. Nothing crazy on him or her. I say him because my boys are black. Well, I have one black and white and one black. But I'm just giving them some highlight, nothing nothing major, just to accentuate because I do have a lot of black going on in my house. Again, we'll let that side dry. Now the white ghost, I wanna do something super fun with. We're gonna glue together. I got out the faux snow from the Christmas stuff. This is fantastic. We are going to make a mess, but, oops, I'm going to basically cover this whole ghost with a thick coat of glue. It doesn't really matter what kind of glue, I want him to be sparkly. Because again, I have a lot of black going on, and so I want to use him her, this as like a highlight right then I'm just going to and you kind of want to push it on there so you get a texture and then I'm gonna let this side dry and come back and we're gonna do the other side but look how fun that is it just gives it just a little sparkle i am kind of going with a little glammy look for my halloween so we're just gonna and i just put it on and use my finger and push it in and then we're gonna let it sit there and dry and then we're gonna do the other side for that oh my fingers i have glue all over me guys i don't quite know if my well I need to do the back of this with the white as well so I'll come back I need to clean up some of this fake snow because it's going to get all over everything so give me a moment okay we're back everybody's dry for the most part the ghost is getting there we'll do him last so like I said on the cat I just 
highlighted some of the stand up fur on the outside. I hope you can see that with the white gel pen. If you don't have a gel pen, use paint. You can do anything you want. I did get both. I'm just gonna tie um, some twine around those. Now on our jack-o'-lanterns, I also took a white, I'm sorry, a black pen and just kind of outlined the eyes, nose, and mouth. I'm not gonna do the ears because we're gonna glue his hat on. So what we're gonna do is very simply take some hot glue nothing crazy and put his hat on now this won't technically be two-sided but because I did paint the back side you know I guess I could go through here draw a line and paint all that black but we're just not gonna do that we're not gonna do that okay but this is how you do it And I've seen a lot of these this year on Pinterest and there was some on a Dollar Tree site. So these are not all like, I came up with this paint stuff, but the idea is not just my idea. I've seen a lot of this around. And then again on my Jack-O-Lantern, he's going, they're going to dry and then I'm just going to tie a some of this brown twine so it can hang from my garland and I can change out on, on the seasons. So we've got these two guys, you can add anything you want, some bling, some washi tape, different color paint. You can make them as detailed as you want or not. So that's those two. The cats obviously were the easiest. The ghost was just a little bit more involved, but he is fabulous. I will show you what I'm gonna do. So of course we have the twine out again. I'm going to, cause I want him to be just a little more fancy. I'm gonna put three beads. These are just the black beads. This one's gonna go in the center of my garland. And I will show you when this is all done. But I have my three black beads cause I want him to hang a little longer. And then instead of going through them and back through the hole, I'm going to go up this way. Now, because this paint or this glue is still wet, it's going to glue the string in place, which I think is fabulous too. And then, oh, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going back up through. So I'm going to have two strings in each, each one of these. And then you just want to make sure they're pulled tight. I'm trying to not pull him too much because I want him to dry completely before I start messing with them. But what I will do is get my scissors and I'm going to cut them pretty long just so it's ready when I want to string the rest of them. But how fun is that? And if you didn't want to do the glitter, you could do some black outlines or um, other kinds of glitter. I just think this is fantastic on here. And I can't wait to show you when it's hanging. But it's not quite ready to hang yet. It does need some, some, dry some more dry time. So we're going to put that to the side. And on this, I'm just, you know, I'm going to measure out all of my strings to make sure that my knots are even. But, oops, I'm just going to um, put some twine on each of them. And I don't even need the needle if I'm just putting some twine on them. But I want them to hang independent. These are not going to be a garland like the coffee cups were. Those are going to hang on that string. These guys here. I'm just gonna put on the garland, like weave it through, and I will show you that whole process when we go downstairs. And I haven't even hung the garland on my mantle yet. I need to, <laughs> I need to do that. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Now, so these are, these are just the Halloween. I could do a Halloween gnome, 
but I chose to do a fall gnome. So I'm going to show you my fall gnome here in a second, but I want to get all the string in here. So that part is done. And then what I will do is lay them out on the floor and determine who gets what. Let me put this needle away in here. Okay. Using the same concept, I took a hat and a leaf and I filled that hole and I decorated the, lid, the, the beard, I painted it and then drew some hair. I painted a little bead and now I have a gnome. Like how fun is that? Easy and fun for that portion. Another fall idea that I have, and this is gonna go on the garland as well for Thanksgiving, is I took one of each of the woodland care of the fall cutouts. So we have here the fox. I stained the whole thing with Jacobean. Right? And then I took my painter's tape, made a line, and then I sprayed some copper at the bottom. And I did that to all of these six. Now, I didn't paint on the back, but I did stain the back. And I have six of them this time because I wanted one of each. Although I don't even know. I feel like this was from last year, but they may have had them out again this year. And then I want to take these sunflowers. Right. That's what we do. We take our Dollar Tree stuff and then I'm just going to nip it off the wire and find a spot that I think would look nice here. Oops. Just give it a little drop of hot glue and attach our little sunflower. And I just feel like that gives it some fall and a little intrigue and just a little something, you know? I wonder if I have to cut these off or can I just pull them off? Oh, I can just pull them off. And then for my pumpkin, I kind of want to do the sunflower in a little place on each of them in a different spot. So we'll do that one there. And... We have an apple down here. I'm sorry, I'm just hot gluing in the corner over here. We'll put that up top on the apple. And these just pull right out. Just foam in the middle there. I put a little drop. Oh, him. I think the fox wants to be right here. And then I just pick a spot on e either one and I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with the Halloween ones. Um, but these are gonna be for Thanksgiving. So I will tie a string on them and um, they'll get hung on the garland for Thanksgiving. And I'll show you here in a minute what each of them look like. And then this here, we're going to put right in the center of our egg corn. And there they are. Like, how adorable is that? So easy. And I have a ton. I think I showed you before, but I have a ton of wooden pieces left. So whatever I don't use this year, I will definitely remember that I have them for last year. Then, if you have any of the miniature little... Um, these were, I think, I feel like these were stickers last year. And I don't know if they're out again this year. Um, but hello. Oops, that's on the wrong side. Dang it, I put the glue on the back. Don't worry. I fixed it. I'm going to put the glue on the front of this. And then I just painted my little hat and then I will probably on this guy draw a nose on him right here in the center, which is a black pen because I don't really have a bead that little. 
And that can just be sit around. But look at our no. Oops. How sweet is that? That's just a little bonus, gnome. I like the leaves better than the um, the ghosts. Some people are using the ghosts and the hat for a gnome, and that looks cute too. This reminds me of Smokey the Bear, but I'm use I'm choosing to go with the uh, leaves right this second. I'm not saying that won't change. I won't make you watch me string up these guys again. Alrighty guys, so here's what it's gonna look like when I put these up for Thanksgiving. I don't think I spaced them properly, but that's okay. I'm gonna take them off here in a second, but I wanted to show you how they're gonna look at Thanksgiving. Oh, I'm really loving this color scheme. And with the fire in the background and all the other decor, I think these are gonna be fantastic. So next up, Halloween. All right, guys, I set up for Halloween. And here is my jack-o'-lantern black cat, the sparkly diva ghost. I love it. I'm so happy to have this set up and done for the season. All right, I hope you enjoyed. All right, guys, we're going to do two Santas a Grinch and a regular Santa. Now for the Grinch green, I just took some regular green and yellow acrylic paint and mixed it together. For my Grinch Santa or my regular Santa, I took some black and white. I really just want more white than gray, but I wanna try to differentiate his beard by adding just a little light gray in here, right? Just to try to give them some color and some texture in here. So I'm doing this underneath, right? Kind of a heavy handed on it, but I'm gonna go back and kind of backfill it with some more white. And just kind of keep adding layers until I get the gray that I want, which in this case is gonna be definitely more white than gray. But I didn't want white on white. I definitely want the beard to be more gray than, um, than white. So I just kind of back filling it in you know, so we have that. We wanna let that dry. Then we're gonna do the Grinch and he's just green. You know, the good old Grinch. I do love me the Grinch, which is why we needed a Grinch Santa. Nothing crazy here. So, that's it on that. On the back of this one, I painted it white just because I wasn't sure where I was going with all of this. I could put on his um, beard some sparkle, but I already have some sparkle. So, oh, and I got some paint on that, but that's okay. I'm going to go clean up my brushes and let these dry, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to put them together. All right, everybody's ready. So we are gonna glue people together. Then we're gonna put their noses and any little decorations on them that we want. On this one here, I'm just gonna give them a little hot glue. This is our Grinch. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, he's so cute. And then I have this little piece of nature. I'm going to give him a nose because, you know, it's not really the Grinch. It's a gnome. So I feel like I need to bring in some nature there for his nose. And then on the top of his hat, instead of a pom-pom, he's going to get a pine cone. And these are definitely going to end up probably, I would say, definitely in my tiered tray. If I had to guess. 
And I don't have to guess because, you know, life. Probably we'll put another pine cone on there. I got this little bag of goodies at the Dollar Tree at the beginning of summer, which was really bizarre because these are Christmas. I'll show you in a second what the bag looks like. Um, but it's decorative filler, but this is definitely Christmas filler. And then we're going to get a little tiny piece of greenery just to finish it off because, oh, how does the Grinch look? I, you know, I'm obsessed with the Grinch. So, of course, this is my ideal. I will show you them downstairs when I'm done. Um, I won't be putting them out because, well, it's not time yet. I mean, I would love to decorate for Christmas, but my family would think I've lost it more than I already have, probably. And then this Santa here is getting a pine cone nose, right? Because that's how we roll. Let me just lay that down okay you have to kind of find the bottom or you're going to be fighting where it goes so this santa gets a pine cone nose and one of these pieces of nature i don't really know what this is so we're going to call it nature up on his hat mostly because i like it it's white but you know gonna have to hold that piece there and hopefully not let it glue to the um, paper towel that's what I'm trying to avoid but look at that one guys these are so adorable now obviously I didn't do anything with the back and I can do some more decorating if I want I do have some ho 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 stickers but I made them too big, I think. Well, we can try. I mean, the worst case, it's too big, right? So what we'll do is I'll see if I can get it on there. And if I can, I will show you when everything has had a chance to dry and I get it set up. So we will be back. All right, friends, here are our Grinch Santa and our traditionally-ish Santa. I got the ho-ho-ho to fit. I love this. I love making gnomes, and I think these are super fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and you can make some of these on your own. All right, guys, have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye.